Will a winning team win this division? God help us all. The NFC East last year was won by the Washington football team, which still doesn't have a name. At seven and nine, it was a it was a weird year, but it was also an NFC East year. Six and ten almost won this division last year. Ben, what is the landscape of this division right now? I mean, it's weird because I can't I can't look at the teams and say that any of them have gotten a lot better. It seems like they're all kind of trying to do the same thing and just hoping that people don't get hurt. I don't know. I mean, I feel like the Giants are the same team as last year. I feel like Washington's pretty much the same team as last year. I don't know how much Dwayne Haskins being gone changes things. I think it's just like Fitzpatrick is just as chaotic as that entire situation they had last year. I mean, the Eagles are the Eagles. I mean, they're the Eagles. And what, the Cowboys have Dak back. And that's really all I've got on, on them. I mean, it's like, you know, they were, they were terrible last year, Dallas. And uh, I, I don't know, like, I feel like they just haven't been good lately with Dak. Their offensive line is not what it was that year that they went like, you know, 12 and four is rookie year. And everyone's like, Oh my God, Dak Prescott's the new guy. That was because of the offensive line. They were running the ball like crazy. Zeke's not the young kid that he once was. The offensive line is a completely different unit. And, uh, you know, their defense is still not very good. So, I mean, they, I don't know. What, are they going to count on Dak to throw for 6,000 yards this year? Like, you know, just garbage time points? I don't I don't know what to expect oh, there's gonna be There's going to be plenty of that in this division. Yeah, I mean, I, I think them being 9-7 and seven is going to probably be fine to, enough to win the division just because, you know, I guess having your starting quarterback back and having C.D. Lamb in his second year – I mean, what they're gonna they're gonna be winning games like, you know, forty to thirty five. That's just what's gonna happen this year. They're just gonna have to outscore their opponents. Like that's I know that really dumbs it down because that's how you win football games. But like when when they when they give up thirty, it's gonna be like, all right, we got to go score forty. And it's and that's not gonna be an unreasonable thing to ask. Like I think if Dallas is sitting around and saying, look, we need to score thirty five to win today, that's something that their offense can do. They can pull that out. Um, but, you know, I mean, for the other teams, I, Washington is just, you know, it's what I said. I don't, I don't know how much Fitzpatrick is going to be an upgrade over the entire situation they had last year. I mean, Fitzpatrick being Fitzpatrick, he's probably not going to start the whole year. We're probably going to see some Taylor Heineke just because Fitzpatrick is just like bench fodder. Mm. Um, the Giants stink. Garbage. Um hopefully as as somebody who wants to be able to root for the giants but just can't because dave gettleman's in charge hopefully it's the last year for dave gettleman um it better be too he picked uh, we'll go, go ahead i'm sorry from, no i'll tell you from the moment he was hired i was i was sitting in florida trying to enjoy my christmas vacation and i get an alert that the giants fired jerry reese and that the front runner for the job was going to be dave gettleman and i was like well there goes the next five years like you they, and they right, you in, were, I, right you were right you were when when a guy's been around the league for that long they don't change like that they, they are just they are who they are um so yeah that's the giants are not going to be good again um not a whole lot of talent there i know they tried to bring in kenny galladay i don't know what he adds he's not like a a number one receiver he's he's a goal line guy he's not a guy who's like a game breaker um so that he also, need, he also needs a quarterback to actually throw him the ball Accurately. Right, and Daniel, and Daniel Jones is not good. I mean, when my my thought with Daniel Jones, he was supposed to be a third round pick, and everybody said he got overdrafted. And when I look, I'll, I'll say it. I evaluated him. I grinded the tape, and I said that he was a third round pick. And I knew that the Giants were going to wind up taking him because it's Dave Gettleman. And if he was supposed to be a third round pick, then we should treat him like a third round pick. I don't know why he keeps getting chances because if this were any other third round pick, like this guy would not be starting games anymore. They would have moved on from him by now because they, because Dave Gettleman hooked his entire uh, future to Daniel Jones and it has to work <laughs> like that. That's it, what it's down to. And it won't. And, and it's not going to, I mean, I yep. think everybody can pretty clearly see that he's not good and we knew he wasn't going to be good. It's only that yep. they picked him in the first round that everybody's like, well, we got to give him a chance. He's a first round pick. No, they made him a first-round pick. He doesn't need a chance because he's a first-round pick. They made him a first-round pick. Everybody knew that he's not a first-round pick. Um, and then 
I just want to Jackson make a or... point though about Jones yeah, yeah, yeah. before you before we move on because like like which for me Jones when he was coming out I saw Jones as his ceiling was he can be a good quarterback that was his that's always going to be his ceiling and it was never going to go above it, like even like I I was like is there even like a ten percent chance he can be in a league no there like he is a his ceiling is this guy can turn into a good quarterback and I think from what we've seen. There are a lot of times where Daniel Jones looks very competent. There's a lot of times where he looks like, oh, well, he can play the quarterback position. It reminds me a lot when I see Joe Flacco nowadays play quarterback. And I mean that, and I genuinely mean that. Because when you watch Joe Flacco play, you're like, this is a guy who can play quarterback. That's about it. He's not like, you know, and 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 Jones is young. He's got some times where you're just like, oh, what the fuck? He's got some the, some uh, some wacky Eli moments to him. He's actually a lot like Eli Manning. It's kind of scary how how yeah. similar he is to Eli Manning in a lot of ways. But I see. But for Jones, my thing, I never understood why he was picked so high because it was so obvious that his ceiling was just not there. It's Dwayne Dwayne Haskins. You can say the same thing about him too with Washington. I, I thought you could have gotten him in the second round. You, you should have gotten him in the third or fourth round, honestly, with Daniel Jones because he was he was a more of a system, like, you need to protect him, have a strong running game, great defense, bring out the 2008 Baltimore Ravens, put Daniel Jones in there. That team will make the playoffs. But, uh, like, the 2007 Giants, that team will make the playoffs. But the, the 20, what was it, 2018 Giants or 2019 Giants, whatever it was, they're not, and you know it, it, it's it, it's so weird. It also tells you how much people can know know about uh, evaluating talent. When Daniel Jones and Dewey Haskins went in the first round, fucking Gardner Minshew went in the sixth round, and he's like outperforming all of them. Like it, 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 it's just it, it, again, it just shows you how incompetent I think the whole draft process, how much of a crapshoot it is, honestly. Too, it's just like sometimes it's just dumb luck. Yeah, and and they'll always pick like potential and talent over production, and we saw yeah. Gardner be a great. Like he he's producing, he's going to step in and he's going to produce. It doesn't matter like what the situation is. He's going to produce. Daniel Jones has the potential to be good, but he never really produced when he was in college. His numbers stunk. He wasn't completing passes. Like, I mean, you could say like, okay, yeah, maybe he can put everything together, but you know, he, there was never a track record that would make you feel confident in that happening. The only thing I'll say on Daniel Jones and, and picking him that high is one, they're lucky it wasn't Haskins because it could have been Haskins and they could have been stuck with that, which would have been even worse. So, okay. Lucky there. The other thing is that the giants that year had two first round picks. They had picks, whatever it was six. And then I think they had 17 and they picked Dexter Lawrence at 17. They could have picked a much better player at six and waited for uh, Jones at 17 or waited for Haskins at 17. Maybe Haskins has a different outcome. Who knows? But you know, you didn't have to reach on Jones. And now there's such a magnifying glass under him because he was a top 10 pick in a year that Kyler Murray, or if you say his name really fast, which I realized the other day, Kalamari, um, he was really the only good quarterback that year that anybody was like worth picking. Like yeah. they could have waited till the next year when Justin Herbert went. Like there were, they, they, there were so many things that they could have done. They did not need to take a quarterback that year. Dave Gettleman, not the smartest guy. Anyway, Eagles 4-12, and 12, we already went through what's going to happen with them and their quarterback situation. Jalen Hurts is probably not going to be the starter next year, and they'll be picking a quarterback. So yeah. there's that. Fair. Um, like, like you said, I think it, it's going to be – this is an NFC East year. I, I don't think a losing team is going to win, though. I want to say I have the Washington football team winning at 8-8-1, eight, eight, and one, and that is an exact 8-8-1. Eight, eight, and one. That is going to be their record that – Tell me I'm wrong, <laughs> um, but I mean, well, you can't. You you picked them to go eight eight one too, but uh, I also did. That's the yeah, hey, eight it's, and eighteen. It's, <laughs> the seventeen, the seventeen game season, man. This is the beauty of it. It's more ties, more chances for ties. Um, but I got the Washington football team winning this. I think whether it's a combination of Fitzpatrick or Heineke, I think either way. They're going to be able to steady the ship, at least within the division, and carry them to competing for it. They're right up there with the Cowboys. I got the Cowboys losing out or, or losing out on the winning the division at eight and nine because that is a losing record. I did the math on this. Eight and eight and one is better than eight and nine. So Cowboys are going to be losing uh, probably like. They're going to lose one to Washington probably because they all these teams lose to each other somehow. Um, and I think 
they're going to end up faltering as, as the season goes on. I just think it's going to unravel. I, I think Mike McCarthy doesn't have the protection of Aaron Rodgers being great uh, on this team. And that's no disrespect to Dak or anyone else. It's just the way the Cowboys operate <laughs> they, they're just they're just not built like that they are going to have they're going to struggle this year and they're and look it's going to be a testament for them going to eight and nine given whatever is going to happen this year because something's going to happen um eagles will go six and eleven and i believe majority of those wins will be with Minshew at the helm i think and I, it's, it's again i i feel bad saying because i like jalen hurts i like all the quarterbacks in the eagles have all of them. They are like, I like all of them. I have reason to to genuinely feel for them. But I think Jalen Hurts is in a shitty situation where he's a young guy who's going to be put on a bad team. And he does and he just doesn't have the experience like someone like a Flacco, like someone like a Minshew to deal with some of those situations. I think he's going to there's going to be situations where he might rely on his legs too much because of the bad situation that he's in as because of how shitty that line is because of. Oh, they don't have any receivers and all that. So it's going to be a tough year for them. Nick Sirianni, might, he might be the next uh, Steve Wilkes. He might get fired after one year. And then, look, he might be just – look, we, we talk about, you know, placeholder quarterbacks. We're in the era of placeholder coach, buddy. Like that, I, think, I think we're in the era of that because Nick Sirianni, he's the poster boy for placeholder uh, coach. Um, and this is the year where the Giants, I think they, they need full reset. Like I, I talked about the Falcons – Dude, it's just just go full on, tear it all down, rebuild every little bit. You might actually be just as good as you are this year, if not better next year because of it. Because you can't really go too much below what you are now. Daniel Jones, the experiment. Uh, look, Daniel Jones' experiment failed. Uh, we don't have to retread waters. I think uh, they're gonna go four and twelve and one, and uh, they're just and they're just. They're just going to do what the Giants do. I think they're just not that talented of a team. They can't even compete in this division. So, and also all these Giants fans who are complaining, hey, we almost made the playoffs last year. Six and ten. Fuck off. Six and ten. If a six, look, a seven and nine, I can stomach a seven and nine team making the playoffs, you know, every like whatever, 10 years or whatever. I'm not. A six and ten team, and you and they had the audacity to complain <laughs> about the Eagles putting in their backup quarterback and losing that game, and be like, "Oh, we missed, we, we only missed out on the playoffs." Because, oh, fuck off, six and ten, win yeah. another game. Exactly. You you do not have the right to complain or say that you were close when you're six and ten. You're a six and ten team. You're no better than the, the other teams in the other divisions that went six and ten and are picking, you know, tenth overall. Also, you're six and ten. You're bad. If you were good, you would have been better. Hell, if also, I was Miami, I'd be mad. No, Miami has like yeah. you're Miami Dolphin man. Yeah, be pissed off. You're ten and six. You didn't yeah. make the playoffs in a in a seven game <laughs> in a seven team uh, playoff format. That's actually wild. But yeah, yeah. continue. Yeah, no, I mean, and my other my other note on the Eagles, uh, all three of their quarterbacks are below the Jared Golf line. So that's that's a rough situation to be in. And also, I think like, Minshew's upside is bigger than Golf's though. Uh, yeah, man. Well. But but anyway. he's also young. He's also young. I mean, dude, he look. He's look in in a in a much different and worse situation. He put up better stats than and did actually better seven and thirteen as a starter than golf did. Yeah, I just feel like Gardner's like he is what he's gonna be, which is he's like he's fine. He's a pretty good like backup, and like he'll step in and place it. Like he's the new Fitzpatrick. Like that he's he is what he's going to be. He is a meme too. Much yeah. yeah, I mean, we love him. Everybody loves Gardner, but. Yeah, I mean, what you were saying about Howie before, I would not be surprised if they decide to clean house, if Sirianni's looking like an idiot out there, uh, if they just nuke everything and start over. Because if they're going to be picking that high, I've got them at 4-12, and 12, they're going to be picking high, they're going to be in the market for a quarterback, you don't want to leave an idiot coach to babysit your first overall pick quarterback. Uh, especially when you have a new GM, you gotta Rat- have everybody on the same. Yeah, track. Rattler. The Rattler cannot be coached by yeah. Sirianni. You cannot allow <laughs> for that to happen. I, I just love uh, how we we just like we spent this like almost this entire like segment on the NFC East just talking about how like three of these four teams are gonna clean house. We didn't even say a positive thing about Washington. We're just like, yeah, Washington's going to win this division by default. I mean, look, the one thing Washington does have going for them, that defense is tough. That, that they, have, they, have a, yep. they have a great defense. They have a, a, mm-hmm. one of the, I think, outside of the Rams, because Aaron Donald is just amazing, uh, they might have the best defensive line in football. 
Yeah, I like the, yeah. The, yeah, like they they got like those some they got some beasts over there. I don't know, I don't know what you're gonna call them because they don't have a name. Uh, but but the Washington Warrior. Uh, I don't fucking know. Uh, but Hogs, hey. the Hogs two point. Thanks for watching this video from Real Take Sports Talk. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Also remember to check out our live show every single Thursday at 8 p.m. right here on the YouTube channel. And remember, keep it real.